Welcome to Off and Pacing on Tab Radio Racing and Sport. Tim Walker will be joined by Matt Young and Oliver County as they delve into the form for today's Pinjarra Harness Meeting, as well as an early look at tomorrow's meeting at Gloucester Park. We are Off and Pacing. And a very good morning, everyone tuned into TAB Radio. Yes, off and pacing now for your Monday morning. And as per always, we are joined by both Matt Young and Ollie County. Matt Young on the OB, Ollie down the line. Very good morning to you both. Good morning to you, uh, Leia, and uh, good morning to Ollie, everyone tuned in. Yeah, it's been a big week in harness racing action. We had the Harness Awards on Saturday night. Congratulations to all the winners. Uh, magnificent Storm taking out uh, the uh, main event billing of Horse of the Year, which uh, adds a little bit of a smile to the connections' faces after what has been a tough couple of weeks with uh, the news about him missing the Nullarbor. And, of course, the Nullarbor is heating up to Leia with... Uh, Plenty of slots still on offer and uh, there's a horse racing today by the name of Steno that is going to be pushing pretty hard for one if uh, people are looking. Steno, from all reports, is very interested in getting a slot. So, uh, uh, Ollie, we can wish you uh, a very good morning and welcome you into the program. How are you on this uh, fine Monday morning or Monday afternoon as it is for you? Good morning to you both. I'm really good. Uh, keen to get stuck in. Wonderful. Let's get stuck in. We will be joining Jocelyn Young a bit later on as well with Matt Young. Great driving performance for her with three wins at Bunbury on Friday. But uh, we will go straight into racing from Friday night at Gloucester Park. Horses to follow. Matt, you like Thompson Bay, Max Legacy and Finn Vara? Yeah, absolutely. Thompson Bay, I thought he was eye-catching. His performance was really good. I think that what I most liked about his run on Friday night was he had a lot of hard runs coming off back handicaps and to be able to get back into this grade and, and just perform well, it just shows that once he gets a draw again, somewhere near the inside, he's going to be very uh, prominent and dominant if he can lead a race. I would suggest he's ready to win. So he's one to follow and he goes around at a half-decent price most of the time. So Tom Thompson Bay is one of those. I thought Finn Vara's run was uh, fantastic. He uh, he just had a couple of runs where it looked like he needed them. And then at last start uh, on Friday night, the performance, we just saw him, you know, just struggling a little bit back in the field. Uh, he was on a loose frame. But once Junior got him to the outside, he just dropped into another gear and really let down. That's uh, a great run on the horse's ability. And he looked like he's going to benefit from that run on Friday night. So he's one to follow going forward. I think there's not, uh, there is a win not far away for him. And Max Legacy, I just liked her performance again on Friday night. Sort of backs up the way she's been going her last couple. And she's one that we'll mention today in the Golden Girls Mile. So, uh, yeah, those are the three that I've earmarked from Friday night. Wonderful. And what about you, Ollie? You've got uh, three aside as well. Uh, the first one I thought was worth following was Lily Lebeau. Uh, hasn't had the best of draws in his last couple. Three back, he was second behind Vegas Strip, which was really good. And then on Friday, he was tucked away on the pegs and he flashed home in a 56 last start behind he as good as gold. I thought it was really good. Horses flying, can do a bit of work in the run. Uh, the next horse I thought was worth following was Daniel Wiggy with it. In the race that was on speed dominated and pegs dominated, getting Wiggy with it was able to fly home out wide. He's a horse with gate speed, so I think when he does draw a gate, he will, he will be really hard to beat. And then the last one with Miss Linton, who was first up off a decent spell, was really soft in the market leading into the race. He worked forward early and then was shuffled right back in the run and he did really well to finish off in second. So I thought he was another one that was worth following. Wonderful. So Louis Lebeau there, one of your horses to follow, getting wiggy with it and Mr Linton. Matt, we've got some replays from Friday night that you had your eye on as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we saw the uh, feature race of the evening was the On the Mighty Quinn and Ira Poole was able to lead and dominate. Here's the concluding stages of that event. 
here from Galaxy Warrior at a 28.6. Ah, Shelly Beach got past Illawong Mustang and then came Jackpot Joe. Ah, Shelly Beach is after Ira Pool. Ira Pool's in front though from Ah, Shelly Beach over the final stages. Jackpot Joe and late on the scene is BJ's boy, but Ira Pool does it well. Ira Pool has raced home to win. A very good effort from Ah, Shelly Beach in second place. Third, Jackpot Joe and fourth in BJ's boy. Ira Paul was able to lead and dominate, and Ollie, as uh, we welcome you back in here, he's uh, just a different horse when he can lead this bloke, and uh, he was dominant again on Friday night. Our Shelley Beach, funny horse, our Shelley Beach. Uh, I've thought a few times, looks like he's going to be uh, a Metropolitan winner quite comfortably, and then he'll be beaten as a favourite. And then he puts in performance and like he has uh, behind might have time and now behind Ira Pool in decent time. So uh, what did you make of this race? Jackpot Joe battled on nicely. BJ's boy got home well from back in the field. And there, w- there was a couple of horses there that weren't too far away. But what did you make of the I'm the Mighty Quinn on Friday night? I think a lot of the talk leading to the race was around the controversial emergency system where... Uh, the emergency does come into the scrap runner's place. So I think there was a bit of quite a bit of confusion leading in as to where each runner would start. But one one start was also allowed. I recall was a, a pretty dominant winner. Um, our Shelley Beach was fantastic. I think anyone that had a ticket on our Shelley Beach was probably hoping she'd land leaders back, but she was super out wide. Um, then, oh, he was super out wide, sorry. And then Jack White Joe. He battled on gamely in third. And there were some really good runs in behind, as you said. It was a pretty quick last half, so anything that was out the back sort of struggled to get into it a bit. But, yeah, dominant winner, Ira Paul. And an exciting so race. The, oh, sorry, Matt, you go. I'll just... I was just saying, with the emergencies, uh, the system that you're talking about, Ollie, were... I didn't um, see too much talk about that. What, what were you alluding to there? I, I just thought it's a bit of a funny system to not have either emergencies drawn in the field or have them drawn out, out wide, out the back. To have emergencies come into the scratch runners' place seems like a bit of an odd system to me. Um, and I, there was a bit of talk about that leading in where a few people, I think, got caught out thinking the other one must have come into, into the scratch runners' place, but that wasn't to be, and it was Jackpot Joe which I'm sure most people realise, but if you're only a casual follower of the sport, I'm sure that might be a bit confusing to you. So that's something I thought um, would maybe be looked at or discussed going forward. Okay, and uh, we'll move on now to race number six, the Tab Touch Free For All. And this was taken out by Mighty Ronaldo. Here are the concluding stages of Ronnie doing his thing. Full bridge, third quarter in 27.8. What's up, Sunshine? Leads two metres, but Mighty Ronaldo's closing in hard now. Covers him quickly on the outside, Mighty Ronaldo. What's he got on uh, What's up, Sunshine here, Hall Jr. around the turn? I don't think there's much there. Mighty Ronaldo has stormed up and raced away now from What's up, Sunshine. Cordero battles on October rain the inside, but it is all Mighty Ronaldo coming away for a brilliant win, and Mighty Ronaldo won well. Second home, What's up, Sunshine? Cordero third. Mighty Ronaldo what a performance here. There was many, myself included, that just thought it could be mathematically impossible to be able to see him win. Uh, 39 lead time, 31, 2, and then three sections, 28 or quicker. He's probably run his last 1,200 with 327 uh, second quarters. So the performance of Mighty Ronaldo was outstanding and it was just dominant. And I guess, Ollie, it uh, just really shows the, the difference between your, your lower tier uh, conditioned horses or uh, free-for-all horses compared to one that has won a Fremantle Cup and I guess are your genuine free-for-allers. It was incredible to see Emily just swing off Mighty Ronaldo as what's up, Sunshine, was out in front just running along as hard as we possibly could there. And, and he was dominant in the end, and, and I was with you. I totally thought, what's up, Sunshine might be able to steal it out in front, but Mighty Ronaldo just had it easy and, and jogged away in the end. And another one that was good again, Cordero, but he just wasn't in the same class as Mighty Ronaldo is now. He's, he's right in the zone, isn't he? Absolutely. Uh, he's just... 
just going so well and has to be one that could be followed going forward, I guess, again. But, uh, yeah, it was a great race. Mighty Ronaldo, looking forward to seeing what he does next. And, yeah, we get to see what's up Sunshine Race today. So those were the main two. We've uh, given those horses to follow Leia. It was uh, a great night again from headquarters at Gloucester Park. It was indeed. And we swing our attention now to Pinjara today. We've got some best bets, Matt. Yours come up in races two, seven and eight. Absolutely. Uh, look, I'm, I'm looking at race two uh, for the basis of abundance. I think abundance can cross these early and from that standpoint, around about the $550.80 I thought was the play. It was a good race play here because even if he was, uh, she was to take a sit in this race, I think abundance can go very close either way. So I think she performs well at the shorter distances. Happy to be with abundance here in race number two on the program. Uh, then we go to the two features and I thought... I don't like the price too much now about Max Legacy, but look, I think if you went three and then uh, had Max Legacy as an anchor for second or third in your novelties, might have time, looks a really good place, Chance Cycle and Charlotte, obviously those two are going to be close enough to the speed, but I think Max Legacy, or I thought Max Legacy was going to just be forgotten a little bit, and as mentioned, was a horse to follow, and I'm Pretty keen that she can run a place today. So I liked her in race number seven for the place. Hopefully she gets back out better than even money. And in race number eight, I was quite hopeful of the chances of Lavra Joe. I just thought he could charge across and get into a good position here. And because he's so versatile and so tough and his last run was the best we've seen him put in for uh, a fair while, I would say at least in 12 months, I think he's tracking in the right direction. We know Ray Jones likes to race this horse and we know when he gets racing at his best, he continues to hold that form for a sustained period of time. So I thought Lavra Joe, Cole Harper could just put the reins in the dust sheet and let him run today and he would go pretty well. So those were the three. Uh, happy to be with Abundance each way in race number two. Max Legacy, I think, is a really good place bet, but just a little bit on the shorter side now since uh, the prices have tightened up a touch and I was happy to be with Lavra Joe in the Mount Eden Sprint. What were your thoughts here, Ollie? Hi, race four, four, I thought initially that Don't Wacky Up would run an improved race, but he was scrapped, so I thought this race set up really well for World Secret. And with huge last start, worked the whole way, only beaten by Dark Eyes, who was then really good on Friday again. Uh, he has pretty good gate speed, so I think he can just force the issue with some horses first up underneath or, or on debut. In race six, it's pretty short now, but Sky Lords, uh, just a class runner in this field, finished off last time in winning the three-year-old country derby where Jocelyn... It was a pretty pretty daring drive on, on the horse and was able to whip around and take the front. And, and it was also placed in some really strong three-year-old races. So I thought there was a chance that Wildcard could lead and hand over. And, and if he did, then Sky Lord did take any price about it in front. And then in race 11, I thought Yankee Cav, he's, he's pretty short too now, so maybe he could double, double, it, up, double it up with Sky Lord. But Yankee Cav, his last two have been super Two back, he was working outside the leader and just found one better in the end. And then last start, he was really, really good. He beat them all. It looked like he was going to win, but then Roman Legion loomed up and, and flew by him, and he's won again since. So I thought Yankee Kevin could lead and win that one. Okay, so just to recap for your selections there, Matt, race two, Abundance, race seven, Max Legacy to run a place, and then we've got race eight, Lavra Joe, after a fantastic run last start. And then for you, Ollie, we've got race four, World Secret, currently at value odds with tab touch 1040, race six, Sky Lord for Jocelyn Young, who we will be chatting to shortly, and race 11, Yankee Kev. So those are the selections for Pinjara today. We are not racing at GP tomorrow. We are racing at Narogen. And Matt, we'll start with you. You've got your best bets in races five and six. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, market is obviously going to tell us a little bit about this, but races five and six were the two that I sort of identified as being 
main play events, uh, race five firstly. I was really taken by the performance of Bet the House in a recent trial. It's got the lovely draw and I just thought uh, Bet the House would run a really good race here. I know Mugatahi's drawn the back line has racing really well. He's got that match fitness but I just thought it could elevate the price a little bit of Bet the House in this event and I'm hoping to get a half decent quote about this horse. The trial was really good and I think what I most liked about it was that Chris Vogue got the uh, three-year-old to the outside and he just sustained the run but the way he ran through the line was like he could charge through a brick wall so uh, he was a really nice two-year-old he went out he's had a long time away from the scene so whatever he does tomorrow night I think he's going to continue on but I really like the performance of Bet the House and I think he's one to follow going out of uh, tomorrow's meeting. I know Mangatay is going to be hard to beat, but I think Bet the House can get the job done there. And in race number six on the card, Our Lady Jan, first up for Dylan Edgerton Green, has been pretty unlucky in recent starts. And look, at her absolute best, I think she would trounce these. She's obviously not going to her absolute best, but I think she can get back to that or somewhere near it tomorrow, and I think she doesn't need to be at her top to be able to win this race. So race six, number five, Our Lady Jen, with race five, number two, Bet the House. And Ollie, usually you guys actually do tip sometimes similarly, but I mean, at Pinjarra, no tips overlapping, and here at Narogen as well, Ollie, you've bet in two separate races, races seven and eight. In, in race seven, there's a horse here that's absolutely flying. I'm not really sure whether he can win. Skippy's delight, but I really, really like him on a one-by-three basis. I'm hoping he's sort of even money to place. He's off a 20-meter 20, 20 handicap here, which I don't think is too bad, the quality of race he's in. Uh, Dorado and Rock and Roll Spirit look the main two dangers up closer, but I think Skippy's delight's just flying. He was shuffled right back in the base last time and flew home and He's just going as well as he possibly can. So I think he'll definitely run a place here, I'm hoping, and, and he can win if things go his way. And then in race eight, I was really taken by Taxi at his last time in. I thought showed really, really strong ability and, and maybe at times did, did a bit wrong. But I think in this race, as the key advantage on, on main rivals in Miss Hepburn and Grand Coteau were off the back row, I think Taxi at has a bit of gate speed. So... Hopefully he can push on to the front, and from there I think it'll be really hard to beat. All right, so race seven, eight, Skippy's Delight for you, Ollie, and race eight, four, Taxi. It is, Matt, your tips at Narragin tomorrow. Race five, Bet the House, and race six, Our Lady Jen. So that wraps up the best of bets for today as well as tomorrow. Before we say goodbye to you, Ollie, have you got any other points of interest to add? No, just really looking forward to the racing at Pindau today. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, yeah, before, before we before we let you go, Ollie, uh, you've taken part in our uh, our I guess our sister show, which is Talking Trots, has been on the air for a little while, and you've jumped into the seat there. So that's on Thursday nights, available on podcasts as well with Glenn Mortimer and uh, Michael Radley. So you've uh, taken to uh, the country selections there, two from two from Friday night. How did the one at Albion Park go? Uh, not not so good, but um, he was a super run, Gus, but he was offered a 20-metre handicap or 10-metre handicap, and he would have broken the track record himself had he won the race, but in the end, he was just running away that he never was able to get into it, and he was left with a bit, a bit too much to do, and being beaten seven metres in the end was a really good effort, but he just couldn't quite get the job done, So, but he's a nice horse, and he's one to follow going forward. And two from two, that's uh, got to be a good start that you were looking for to solidify your spot on Talking Trots on Thursday night. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an honorary spot, isn't it? So I've um, got to make the most of it and hopefully get a few winners of value like Hay- Hayden King did back when he was doing the show. So hopefully do him proud. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your company this morning. Ollie will be joining you, you, you again next Monday. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks very much, Laugh. All right, we'll take a about 20-second break or five-second break before we get into our next special guest, Jocelyn Young. They are often pacing on Tab Radio Racing and Sport. Okay, welcome back to Off and Pacing and Jocelyn Young about to join us this morning. Jocelyn's got four runners in and also a drive for today's program at... Uh, 
Pinjarin really looking forward to uh, the, the talents and stock that she's bringing to the track today. Good morning to you, Joss. Good morning, Matthew. Uh, we have see Skylord coming back. I know Steno's obviously main event billing uh, for the stable going into today's meeting, but uh, a horse that means a lot to you and is very close to your heart. It must be great to have uh, Skylord, or also known as Tommy, back to the track today. Yeah, it just it feels like you just you put them out and then you're forever waiting to get them back to the races because it's just it's exciting to be able to take a horse like that to the races. Um, as much as today doesn't look like a walk in the park, um, he should go well. How, how has he been coming up? There have obviously been issues with him in the past uh, through his three-year-old, uh, through his three-year-old preparation. It looked like he was just in and out and sort of wasn't able to get consistency with his campaign. Uh, are you happier with him going into this preparation? Yeah, um, I've always, like, it's, it's not his fault. He's just... He's had feet trouble and he got sick and a couple of different things that made every prep so far has been um, interrupted, which is disappointing for us and him because I just think that we haven't really been able to have him at his best or not for a long time. I think he's definitely a horse that he's better with a couple of hard runs under his belt and he just never really seems to be able to get that because... He'll end up back out and then back in and he'll be a run or two short. <laughs> but um, as I said today, he's first up mile, probably not not the perfect prep um, or not the perfect first up race, but I thought oh, he could draw one, but he drew four. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I know that he'll go well because he's a good horse. So uh, if going into this race, are you going in thinking he's going to need this run to really top him off, or do you think uh, on his work it's suggesting that he's ready to rock and roll and he could be able to overcome what is a bit of a tricky draw? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see him overcome it, but it's probably not a race where we're putting all our eggs in one basket and going to gut him for um, for a country win. Um I mean, he's definitely got the ability, but he also, he definitely will need the run, and I can guarantee tomorrow he'll just be jumping out of his skin after a run today. Um, and as I always say, I'm probably a bit bit soft on them. So generally they take a, a run or two. Okay, and in the Golden Girls Mile for Woodland Stud, uh, Max Legacy's drawn in one. Uh, before we get on to Steno, she's uh, really racing quite well, Max Legacy, and this is the perfect draw for her. Do you go into this race expecting her to be sort of hanging on your coattails pretty well? Yeah, her last couple of runs, I mean, she's looked good because she's been held up from bad draws. Um, so that's probably... Oh, well, obviously she's she's going well and hitting the line good, but it probably makes her look better because she's been held up. Um, it would have been interesting to see what she did if she, if she did get clear. Um, but yeah, I think, as you said, perfect draw, and I don't know if she'll hang on to Steno's coattails, but I hope that she's not too far away. And with Steno in the race, uh, she looks like she can charge across and dash to the lead, and how how is she tracking behind the scenes going into from her last run into this? Is she ready to rock and roll today? Yeah, this is the race that we'd sort of um, well we we aimed at. We thought we'd skip the Lombardo and go to this one. She loves the mile. She's just she's just fast. So um, and that draw worked out perfectly. Um, she seems to be very three to her number. Um, so, yeah, I don't really, you know, all things being equal, she should be able to lead and we know that she can run a good mile. So I'm actually pretty excited about that. So do you go into today? I know that there was that in the back of the minds uh, with uh, the uh, mayor's, I can't remember which feature it was, at Gloucester Park, but over the mile she was able to, Rate a ridiculous mile rate of 151 and change, 151.9 on that occasion in the Laurie Kennedy. Uh, so going into this today, do you 
go out with the mindset of not only just trying to win, but maybe stamping your authority for a potential spot in the Eastern States feature or the Nullarbor and try and break the track record today? Well, those things, to me, it's sort of, if it happens, it happens. We don't want to be um, putting her in jeopardy or under any extra pressure than she needs to be, really. Um, maybe if they were going to give me the 10000 No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, th- I think she'll just, she'll run a, a solid mile regardless because that's just what she does. Um, when she went 51 night around Gloucester Park, she did that with her plugs in. So um, I'm excited to see her at Pinjarra on the big track. But also I think the conditions of the day sort of determine how fast the track is too. Um, it's a little bit windy today, but other than that, it's setting up pretty nicely. And with her, there's been discussion about not only heading east and potential spots, uh, just awaiting that invite, but at the same time, you're quite open to the opportunity to maybe get into the Nullarbor. Have you had any discussions with anyone, or what's what's the story there? No, only really discussing it amongst each other. Um, it's Well, she, we've seen her run the 2500 in good time as well. She's got the gate speed. She can sit up. She's got the speed. Uh, and obviously, if that opportunity came up, you're not going to knock back her race um, worth over a million dollars. Um, and I think that everyone would be um, happy to skip the Sydney trip if, if it worked out that way. Um, Sydney's worth good money, but it's 200000 compared to a million. So I think that's an easy decision. Yeah, and a million in your own backyard as well. Uh, on to uh, the Mount Eden Sprint, Valentine's Brook. We get to see him back, and his last run was fourth in the WA Pacing Cup behind... Magnificent storm, and it looked like he really elevated in those last four or five starts. Is is that the feeling he gave you, is that when he stepped up to free-for-all company, took him a couple of runs, but it looks like he's really uh, asserting himself as a genuine free-for-aller. Yeah, he. Um, I won't say he surprised me because he's just got a really a, a good attitude to racing and he's just um, got a really strong will and he just... He loves racing. He's very competitive. So um, I'm not surprised that he took that step. Um, but the other thing is that he is sort of getting on a bit now and he's um, had 80-odd starts. And he's, I won't say he's been racing at that level for a long time, but he's done a fair bit of racing. So you start to get a few little niggles and bits and pieces. But I am actually... This is probably the best I've had him looking, um, like, for the start of his prep. So I think that he's... He is quite forward, so I'll be interested to see what he does today. I didn't really ever think that he was a miler, but that race that he won before getting into the pacing cup, he um, sort of changed my mind on that. So it looks like a race where there could be a lot of speed in it, and with the draw, it's not too bad. So do you just uh, get caught? Oh, you're driving. Uh, do you just get uh, into a good position? He's jumped off a swing band. He's just, uh, he's not loyal. <laughs> he's uh, a horse who obviously can do the work in his races, but at the same time, uh, do you just try and uh, give him a bit of a cuddle up and hopefully they overdo it and that really brings him into it? Yeah, I think definitely um, first off and I can see that oh, they'll just be they'll be running hard all the way. I don't think there's ever going to be a point where they back off. So I think, yeah, just grab a spot and um, just have him hitting the line strong. And do you make it three in a row without a lombo? Um, probably a little bit of a ask. Um, I do know that the trainer's quite happy with her. I think he maybe put some blocks on her to sharpen her up a bit, which she probably needs to be sharper over a mile and in a race like this. Um, but I do think she is a horse that um, she's still got a little bit more improvement in her. She's still sort of figuring out what to do. So I'd be surprised to see her on a, um, a handy race. Oh, well, looking forward to that today. Jossie, thank you very much for joining us here on Off and Pacing and all the best today. And hopefully uh, we get to see a few winners for yourself. Thanks for having me. There we have Jocelyn Young joining us here. Leia, as we've timed it really well, only uh, 
A woman nearly at the top of the hour, so that's off and pacing for this Monday and looking forward to hopefully some more Nullarbor news coming up in the next week. Wonderful. Looking forward to it and we'll be joining you again next week, Matt. Have a wonderful day. Cheers. Matt Young there with the off and pacing, of course, drawn by Ollie County earlier on. We will head.